explained in chapter 4, paragraph 63. Or its proximate cause is grounds for the initiation of energy. So grounds for the initiation of energy also. I think we, we, we have met with it somewhere back. Now, if you want to read all these grounds, then please read book uh, Dialogues of the Buddha, Part 3, page 239, etc. Grounds for initiation of energy. I, I'll tell you only, on, only two. There is something you have to do. You have to do something. Then, before doing that, so you say to yourself, when I am doing that, that work, I, I will not get opportunity to, to practice, uh, say, meditation. So, I must practice now, before, before I get to that work. So, in, in this way, you, you initiate energy, uh, you, uh, you, you, you make effort and practice meditation. And then, after the work, then you, you practice meditation to saying to yourself, during the work I, 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 I didn't have the opportunity to practice meditation, so now I must practice. So in this way you arouse energy in yourself. So with regard to mm, your work, there are two. With regard to going traveling, there are two. Before, before going, going on travel and after coming back on travel. And then there is uh, sickness. Before, before you, you, you get sickness, you practice meditation, and after sickness also you <laughs> practice meditation. And then uh, going for arms. So before going for arms, after going for arms. <laughs> so actually, uh, every time you have to arouse uh, energy to practice. So these are called the grounds for initiation of energy. When rightly initiated, it should be regarded as the root of all attainment and so on. And then the next one is Jivida. Jivida is like the Jivida in the uh, corporeality. And then Samadhi, we come to Samadhi. It puts consciously evenly on the object, uh, consciousness evenly on the object, or it puts it rightly on it. So this you know, in the word samadhi, you have the, you have this the uh, the uh, uh, prefix sam s a m, so that s a m can mean evenly samam, or rightly samma, so evenly rightly, or it is just a mere collecting of the mind, thus it is concentration. Its characteristic is non-wandering. That means itself non-wandering or its characteristic is non-distracting, that means with regard to cognizant states. So it does not let cognizant states uh, to be distracted, and it itself is non-wandering. Its function is to conglomerate cognizant states as water does bath powder, so it keeps them together. It is manifested as peace. Usually it, uh, its proximate cause is bliss, but it is not always, therefore it says usually. Because samadhi can be uh, without sukha also, right? Fifth jhana. <coughs> like the, it is to be regarded as steadiness of the mind, like the steadiness of a lamp's flame when there is no draft. So steadiness of the mind, that is samadhi. So samadhi is, is a mental state which, which puts the mind on the object evenly and rightly. Evenly means uh, keeping the cognition states together and rightly means not itself being distracted. So that is what we call samadhi on the object. It, it's <coughs> on the object and it also keeps the, the other mental factors together, not let them be scattered. So that is what is called samadhi. And the next one is sadha, faith or confidence. And 
with regard to its function that is to enter into like the setting out across a flat and the SN the, the reference is given but I would like to give to, uh, to give you another reference and that is Exposita page 158 please read for, for the meaning of that setting out across a flat a brief uh, in brief a brave man could take other people across the, uh, across the flood or across the river. I mean, crossing uh, uh, in a boat or crossing uh, by themselves. So in the same way, when you have sadha, when you have faith or confidence, then you can plunge into things and then you can accomplish. So uh, sadha is compared to crossing the flood or one who crosses the flood or one who himself crosses a flood and who takes others with him. Uh, yeah. And that is uh, what we call sadha. So, please read Exposita, page 158. And then, it should be regarded as a hand because it takes hold of profitable things as wealth and as seed. So, for uh, for regarding as a hand, uh, please read Gradual Sayings, third volume, page 245. If you have a hand, you can pick up things that are profitable to you, that are good for you. So in the same way, if you have faith, if you have confidence, you can get kusala. So that is why uh, it is compared to a hen. Sometimes it is compared to wealth and sometimes to a seed. And then sadis, I mean uh, mindfulness. You know, you, you, all of you know about mindfulness. It has a characteristic of not wobbling, that means not floating on the surface. Its function is not to forget, that means not to lose the object. Not to forget means not to lose the object and it is manifested as guarding and so on. And its proximate cause is the foundations of mindfulness. And here foundations of mindfulness really means the objects of foundations of mindfulness. Mm, the body, feeling, consciousness, and say Dhamma objects. It should be regarded as like a pillar because it is firmly founded or as like a doorkeeper because it guards the idol and so on. And then two things, Hiri and Otaba. So Hiri is translated here as conscience and Otaba as shame. I don't think it, uh, this is uh, quite correct. Otaba is fear or dread. Hiri is shame. <laughs> so. I think we should translate hiri as shame or conscience, but otaba, something like dread or fear, and fear here means moral, moral fear. Uh, we are ashamed to do uh, what is wrong, and that is, that is hiri or shame. And we are afraid to do what is wrong because uh, uh, we, we don't want to get the, the painful consequences of uh, these actions. So this is a term for anxiety about evil. Here in conscience has the characteristic of disgust at evil while shame, that is the second one, has the characteristic of dread of it, right? So, so shame and dread, or shame and fear, these two things. And then a man rejects evil through conscience out of respect for himself as the daughter of a good family does. He rejects evil through shame, or the second thing, uh, fear, out of respect for another, as a courtesan does. <coughs> These two states, I say we, we will strike out the but. These two states should be regarded as the guardians of the world. Uh, they are described as the guardians of the world. So long as these two uh, reside in the minds of the minds of beings, the world will go on. When these two left the minds of the, the, the beings, then the world will become, what do you call, 
undifferentiated or they, they, they will not not uh, act according to their conscience so there will be no moral what you call, moral restrictions or something so uh, human beings will, will become like animals and so on and that is why they are called the guardians of the world uh, moral shame and moral fear that means a shame to do um, immoral things and fear to do these things. The next is aloba, adosa, and amoha. Aloba, non greed, adosa, non hate, and amoha, non delusion. So, amoha, non delusion means what? Panya, wisdom. So, amoha and panya are the same. And about the middle of that paragraph, its function is not to lay hold like a liberated bhikkhu. It is manifested at its, as a state of not treating as a shelter, like that of a man who has fallen into filth. I mean, not attached to or not adhering to, something like that. So when you, when you fall into, into filth, then you are not attached to filth. You want to get rid of it uh, as soon as possible. So, it is not being attached. And then, about two, three lines down, its function is to remove annoyance, or its function is to remove fever. That means to, to remove heat. Not necessarily fever, but heat. As central wood does. Now, when, when people are hot, people use the central wood paste. They apply central wood paste to, to their bodies, and then they become cool. It is very uh, familiar thing in, in, in Burma. You may have seen uh, Burmese girls with something like face on their cheek. <laughs> it, it's only used in Burma. It's, it's like, what do you call this, make, make, make up? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something you apply on your face. So when it is hot, uh, they apply that kind of thing, uh, especially sandal, sandal wood. They make it, send a wood into a paste or something. How, 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 how do you call this, making push? To it? Grinding. Grinding, yeah. They usually do it on this. Uh, Mortar? Stone. Uh, yes, like something like a, 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 a flat stone. Uh, a flat stone. And then we push it on, on, push on the stone. Mm -hmm. So that they, uh, with water, so they get a paste. And that paste is applied to the face or to the other parts of the body. And it, it keeps uh, them cool. Or something like that here. Non-delusion has the characteristic of penetrating things according to their individual assets and, assets and so on. So this is panya. It has a characteristic of sure penetration. So it will never miss. Panya, if it is real panya, will never miss. And like the penetration of an arrow shot by a skillful archer, right? Its function is to illuminate the objective field. So if, if this room is dark, we cannot see things in this room. So when there is light, we see things clearly. In the same way, when there is no panya, we don't see things as they are. So when panya enters our minds, we see things as they are. So it is like, uh, like a lamp. It is manifested as non bewilderment like a guide in the forest. So you may be lost in the forest, but if you have a guide, uh, you will not be, uh, you will not get lost. The tree should be regarded as the roots of all that is profitable. And then, tranquility of body, tranquility of consciousness, and so on. Now, uh, they, they are pairs. Here, body does not mean material body. Here, more body means three mental aggregates, feeling, perception, and mental formation. So they are here called in Pali, Kaya. <coughs> and the next pair, lightness of the body, lightness of consciousness. There, there are feral material qualities among the 24 material properties. And then next is what? 
malleability of body and malleability of consciousness. And the next pair, wieldiness of body, wieldiness of consciousness. And the next pair, proficiency of body, proficiency of consciousness. Another next pair, rectitude of body, rectitude of consciousness. Now we come to zeal, desire, chanda. Now chanda is just a desire to act, the mere will. So that zeal has a characteristic of desire to act. Its function is scanning for an object, searching for an object. It is manifested as need for an object. That same object is its proximate cause. It should be regarded as the extending of the mental hand in the apprehending of an object. That means if you want to pick up something, yeah, you, you put out your hand, something like that. So it is not attachment, but it is just, mm, just the, the mere will to do, the desire to do. Next is resolution. It has characteristic of conviction. Its function is not to grow. It is manifested as decisiveness. Its proximate cause is a thing to be convinced about. It should be regarded like a boundary post or it is a gate post owing to its immovableness with respect to the object. And the next is in Pali Manasikara. It is the maker of what is to be made. It is the maker in the mind. Now, this definition is difficult to, to translate. Actually, what is, uh, the Pali word is manasi and kara. Now, kara means doing or making. And manasi means in the mind. So, manasi kara means doing in the mind. That is one meaning. Or making in the mind. That means um, paying attention. The other meaning is making the mind. That means making the mind different. So, uh, the third line. It makes the mind different from the previous life continuum mind. Thus, it is attention. So, after the word thus, we should put also, thus also, it is attention, because it is, it is a different definition from the first one. The first one says, uh, it is the making in the mind. And second one says, making the mind. Yeah, making the mind in making the mind different. <coughs> and this definition refers to the second and third kind of attention uh, described, described later down uh, about towards the end of the paragraph. Now there are three kinds of um, manasikara, let, let me use the Pali word, there are three kinds of manasikara. Controller of uh, objects, controller of cognitive series, that means controller of uh, mm, uh, cognitive series. What is cogni cognitive series? Thought process. Controller of thought process and controller of impulsions. Now, controller of cognitive series means five-door adverting. So five-door adverting is called controller of uh, thought process because the, the thought process, real thought process begins with uh, that, that moment of consciousness. And controller of impulsions means mind-door adverting because uh, after the mind-door adverting come impulsions. But they are not meant here, actually. What is meant is just attention, which is called controller of, uh, on controller of objects. <coughs> so there, there, there are three ways, uh, three, three kinds of uh, manasikara. Controller of objects, controller of cognitive series, 
and controller of impulsions. The last two are not, not, not meant here. So the first one is well, what is meant here, the controller of object. That means just paying attention. And then next one is specific neutrality, and it is often called upika. The Bali word is tatra majjatada, neutral in regard thereto. That means just uh, being in the middle, not falling into liking or disliking. It has the characteristic of conveying consciousness and consciousness concomitants evenly, so making them evenly. Its function is to prevent deficiency and excess, or its function is to inhibit partiality. It is manifested at, as neutrality. It should be regarded as, as like a conductor or a driver who looks with equanimity on thoroughbreds progressing evenly. So I, I, I compare this to cruise control in a car, right? <laughs> you put on the cruise control and you don't have to worry about speed. <laughs> Here also, when the thoroughbreds mean when horses are running evenly, uh, say drawing the cart evenly, then you don't have to worry about them. You just look on. <coughs> and then compassion and gladness, karuna and mudita, they are described in the divine abodes. The only difference is there they belong to jhanas, and here they belong to karma vajra. And on, on the next page, uh, that should not be admitted for as to meaning. No. Instead of saying as to meaning, we should say in reality. As to meaning, not as to meaning. In reality, non-hate itself is loving-kindness and specific neutrality itself is equanimity. And then we have abstinences, three abstinences. I think you understand about them. And then uh, describes uh, the mental mental states which arise with different types of consciousness. So it may be confusing for you if you do not uh, have the eighty-nine types of consciousness in mind and also fifty-two types of consciousness. So they can be studied from the manual of Abhidhamma or. Uh, during the, the Abhidhamma class here, I, I uh, distribute the handouts. So you may, you may look at those handouts and then read these passages. <coughs> and then we come to unprofitable, Akusala. They are also on page 529, paragraph 159. As regards the unprofitable also, there are Constance, inconstance, and and or whatever states, so they they are, they are clearly mentioned here. And then down the page we have the consciencelessness and shamelessness. Here also we may say. And the first one, shamelessness, and the second one, fearlessness. Ahiriga is shamelessness, and Anotaba is fearlessness. And then there is Loba and Mohad, described in paragraph 161 and 162. And then uh, greed is compared to uh, bird lime or monkey lime. And the, des the explanation or the description of greed like monkey lime can be read in Kindred Sayings, Book 5, page 127. <coughs> when a monkey is uh, stuck to that lime, it, it could not uh, get itself free from that lime, that, that sticky substance. In the same way, when you have greed, when you have attachment, then you cannot get away from it. You, you, you are stuck to the object. And then, on uh, paragraph 163, 
about five lines down, it is manifested as the absence of right theory. What is theory? Is it understanding? Yeah, or belief. Theory is something that has not been proven yet. I see. Theory. Uh, it is uh, the word used here is pati pati, and it means understanding or knowing. So absence of right understanding. And then wrong view, agitation, and so on. So I think they are not difficult to understand. And then Akusala <clears throat> Now uh, I, I brought these two two sheets, right? So uh, the the chat seekers are given in the order as in the manual of a Bidama. And then and the Roman numerals are those given in this book. And there is one, one thing. Now, if you look at uh, paragraph 166, end of 166, you find stiffness and torpor, given only one number. 43, right? Uh, Roman numeral 43. Mm -hmm. And then, for uh, the, here on, for Ikagada, it gives two number here in this book. Actually, that should uh, have only one number. Uh, I'll tell you where. On page 532, bottom line, steadiness of consciousness. Steadiness of consciousness is the same as concentration, which is number eight. It should not be given a separate number because it is, it is the same mental factor as concentration. And, stiff and to stiffness and torpor should be given uh, in number eight. So there may be some, some corrections to be made if you if you want uh, it to be correct, but uh, as it is, you may you, you can look at this this the these sheets and then find out uh, what is meant in in the manual of a bidama. Because in this book, the the mental states are given not 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 in 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 the group they they belong. They are here given as accompanying uh, different types of consciousness. So they are uh, repeated in, in different types of consciousness. For example, contact is repeated on page 532, 533, and so on. <coughs> and then, what else? We find another theory on page 533, paragraph 177. It should be regarded as obstructive, ob obstructive of theory. There, here also, I think, we should say obstructive of understanding. But in Burma, we understand this as meaning obstructive of practice. So if you have doubt, then you do not practice. So it obstructs your practice. So you have doubt about the te teaching, you have doubt about the efficacy of this method, then you will not practice it. So it is obstructive to the practice. So we, we, in, we interpret the word as practice in Burma. So, uh, 
and then um, the the book describes which which mental factors accompany which which um, uh, type of consciousness and as i said they may be confusing if, if you do not have the the, the 89 types of consciousness in mind so it, it, it is better to to read the manual of a bit of my and find out where uh, which type of consciousness is accompanied by which type of jt seekers now one thing uh, at the beginning it is said that altogether how many the first the first type of consciousness accompanied by 36 uh, paragraph 133 here and firstly those associated with the first sense we have profitable consciousness amount to 36 is that correct yes why 36 and not 38 hmm Actually, there must be 38, right? Yes. Then why 36? Because the context uh, may or may not be present. No. I'll give you a hint. Hmm? The third edification. What? They're talking about the third edification. That's right. We we are talking about formation aggregate here. So, Vedana and Sanya are not counted here. But in the manual, Vedana and Sanya are also counted because they are uh, mental mental factors. So, in the in the manual of Vedana, you will find 38 jati seekers accompanying this consciousness. That is correct. And it is it is correct too. because uh, here uh, it, uh, the author is describing the mental formation con- uh, aggregate that is why these two are missing here so out of the 52 so there are 52 but uh, 52 are mental 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 states i mean mental factors but sankhara are only 50 not 52 This chapter is like like a manual of a bidama you are really studying a bidama <laughs> So with 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 these I think you can you can find out uh, which is which That is why there are no no numbers for say vedana and sanya right the aesthetics are or whatever states and plus signs are in constants in constant means they don't they don't accompany always they accompany the, the, that type of consciousness sometimes only now for example number 25 and 26 on on this uh, sheet tina and meda they accompany the five prompted right five prompted types of consciousness but not not every time suppose a, a person may be stealing stealing something uh, with uh, actively stealing then his consciousness may not be accompanied by tina and meda 
So only when uh, there is, say, sleepiness or some, something, uh, our Tina and Meta accompany uh, the consciousness. Otherwise, they don't. So they are called inconstants or unfixed adjuncts. Okay, next week we'll go up to the end of uh, basis. Let's see. Paragraph six. Uh, next, next chapter, paragraph 16. Chapter 15, paragraph 16, that is page 552. So we'll go until that. So now we have come to uh, the end of five aggregates and next week some other things to know about five aggregates but the the detailed treatment of five aggregates are uh, complete now so what are the five aggregates aggregate of matter aggregate of feeling aggregate of perception aggregate of Consci- I mean, mental formations and aggregate of consciousness. But here, uh, aggregate of consciousness is given before the three other aggregates. But the, the, the usual order given in the sudas is um, uh, matter, feeling, perception, mental formations, and consciousness. And these these five can be reduced to two, nama and rupa. So first, uh, uh, corporeality aggregate is rupa and the other four, nama. So when we say nama and rupa, we mean these five aggregates. So whether we say five aggregates or nama and rupa, we mean the same thing actually. Uh, 